Hi guys, I have just received my 13-inch 1799 2020 MacBook Pro and oh my boy. I am a data engineer and I often run very intensive machine learning algorithms on my laptop. On top of that, I make videos. I need power. What I really want to show you is how my actual workflow changed from a mid-range Lenovo laptop to this brand new MacBook Pro. So I know I won't be comparing apples to apples. But if you are in two minds, whether you want to invest in a high-end machine, then hopefully this video will show you the actual real-world performance of the 1799 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro. Okay, let's get started. Firstly, God, I was so happy when my baby finally arrived. Hey! This day has come. My new little baby has just arrived. Is it baby boy, baby girl? I don't know yet. Haven't decided. I don't know what's inside. Let's get down to this. See, I prepared those dangerous tools. Let me just put them away. Apple has given us a little black arrow here. So all we have to do is to I think I'm gonna go. <laughs> to use English as the main language, press the return key. Where's the return key? To use British English as the main language, press the return key. Okay, where's the return key? I think I need some time alone with my new baby now. I'll see you in two seconds in the actual review. <laughs> so clearly I was all jolly and excited, right? Right. So after I cooled down a little bit, the first thing I thought was, okay, let's do some video editing in Final Cut Pro. I immediately installed the free trial, I imported some clips for the next YouTube video, I started editing and bam, bummer. The program was so much slower than I had imagined it would be. Remember in my previous video I was joking that I felt robbed after buying the 1799 MacBook Pro? See, after starting editing in Final Cut Pro, it stopped being a joke. Okay, I was shocked. I even recorded a video for my friends as it was happening to show them my frustration. And this is the actual video. This has been taking a while now. This was meant to be fast. What's wrong with this? Have they sent me a fake? Still not finished? I'm not even doing anything. It's not like I'm rendering something. I'm just clicking on a clip. That's it. I just clicked on a clip. Great. That was me being angry. Could you see that? Guys, I paid 1800 pounds. 1800 pounds for a laptop. That's an insane amount of money. I expected fireworks. That was not fireworks for me. I actually started to think that my RAM was faulty. So I checked the RAM and according to Apple's diagnostic tools, apparently it was all okay. I thought to myself, okay, before I send this piece of disappointment back, let me at least have a look at some hacks on how I can speed the Final Cut Pro up. I was searching for a long time and in one of the forums someone suggested to switch off the background rendering and it turned out to be the cause of those lags. And I mean, maybe I was naive with this purchase because, you know, I really bought into this idea of MacBooks are super powerful, they are the best machine for creatives, they are, you know, almighty and if my brand new 2020 upgraded macbook pro cannot handle background rendering then i mean am i naive right so after this little crisis i got to the actual comparison between my windows laptop and the brand new mac i tested three things or three use cases situation one Machine learning algorithms. 
machine learning algorithms need a lot of power because they do an insane number of calculations under the hood to come up with results. In one of the previous videos, I showed you how to build a personality system with a machine learning algorithm called K-Means. Actually, in that video, I used a slightly more efficient version of K-Means called Mini-Batch K-Means, but this time I was relentless for my laptops and I used the actual K-Means algorithm that is a one-batch monster. All right, I'm running K-Means on my windows here as indicated by the star next to the cell. Okay, fast forward, it's almost 12 minutes and the star is gone. Here, this is my MacBook. Again, little star is there, it's still running and fast forward, 45 seconds. The difference is just crazy. Situation two, preview in video editing. Video production is one of the most intensive tasks you can do on your machine and when you're adding all those layers and pictures and audios and effects you want to see the live preview of the changes that you are making right and that is quite a stressful thing for your laptop the program i've been using so far is called vsdc and it's only available for windows and there is a free version and a pro version and i bought the pro version it cost me 20 dollars um, so let's see how my Windows laptop was handling this live preview. I did a very similar, if not almost the same, edit in Final Cut Pro. So now let's see how my MacBook handles live preview. Just look how smooth it is. It's actually amazing. I don't need to comment on that, right? No contest. So let's move on to situation number three, which is video production rendering. After we finished editing, we want to export the whole video, or in other words, we want to render it. Now, let's see how much time it takes to render this video on my Windows laptop and how much time it takes to render this video on my MacBook. Okay, export. And how long is it gonna be? 16 minutes? More? 21 minutes. Here, I'm doing the exact same thing in MacBook Pro. All right, I don't have a clock here so watch the time in the top right corner it was two minutes guys again the difference is just insane situation number four debugging with touch bar this is a highly contentious point many people hate on touch bar and maybe i'll become one of them once it starts getting in my way but for now i'm just mesmerized with this nice little shiny gimmick. When I was at uni, one of my friends had MacBook Pro and he was debugging his code in VS Code using the touch bar. And it just looked so cool because you can click on all those arrows like step into a function, step out, you know, start over and all that on the touch bar. And it just looked amazing. Like he was, you know, a magician or something. Guys, as you can see, if you're doing video editing or you're doing machine learning, and you're thinking, is upgrading my machine worth it? Then if you can afford it, then hell yes. I know I wasn't comparing, you know, high-end machines to each other because I don't own two high-end machines, but I'm sure there are people out there like me who have those older laptops, like mid-range laptops, who want to do machine learning or who want to do video editing. And they're thinking, is upgrading worth it? Is it gonna change my workflow? And the answer is yes, it is gonna change your workflow. It is going to make everything more efficient for you, less frustrating. So if you can afford it, do it. Is the 1799 13-inch MacBook Pro 2020 the best high-end machine out there? 
I don't know. Is it a great upgrade from a mid-range Windows laptop? Hell yeah. Guys, I'd be... Guys, I'd be... Guys, I'd be honored if you considered becoming my subscriber. We've got a growing community and I have more videos coming. So, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.